Hello everyone. I'm back with Women Who Encountered Jesus and our look at Martha of Bethany. And yesterday, or the last session, we were looking at uh, the interchange, the conversation between Jesus and Martha. Lazarus, Martha's brother, has died. He's in the tomb. And Jesus waits two days before coming to see Martha and Mary. Even though lots of other people came from Jerusalem, lots of other Jews came over to comfort them because it was only two or three miles away, Jesus waited two days. And as he's on his way, Martha runs out to see him. And she says, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. So Jesus tests Martha's faith a little bit, and he talks to her about what she believes. And I was looking at this in a different version, um, you know, a little bit uh, from the uh, English Standard Version because it's just a different translation and it gives me a little bit of other kinds of backgrounds. So Martha said to Jesus, this is verse 21 of John 10, John 11, okay, verse 21. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whatever you ask for God, God will give you. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. It's just such a great statement. But of course, Martha believes he means in the last days. So she says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, these wonderful words. Listen to these just great words because he's saying them to us too. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He's challenging her. Do you understand? I'm it. I'm the resurrection. I can do anything to resurrect anything in anyone's life, to resurrect humans, to resurrect love, to resurrect joy. I am the resurrection. If you have me, you don't need anything else. And right away, Martha says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. So now she knows he's God and he's also man. And Jesus is going to show his humanity in the next passage because Mary goes back and says to or Martha goes back to see Mary who's inside crying and says the teacher's here and he's calling for you. he wants to talk to you so this is verse 29 and this is Mary and when she heard it meaning Mary she rose quickly and went to him now Jesus had not yet come into the village but was still in the place where Martha had met him she must have, Martha must have really ran quite a long ways when she heard Jesus was coming. He was still there. He didn't come any closer. He waited for Mary to come to him. So, um, so she, he was still at the place where Martha had met him. This is verse 31. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. So all of these Jews who had come from Jerusalem, they see Mary jump up and run out, and they think, hmm, she must be going to the tomb. Let's go with her. We, we want to be with her. We want to give her some support. So there was a whole crowd of people then that came, not just Mary, but a whole crowd of people. And she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. That really shows Jesus as the man. The miracles show him as God, but these feelings he has, that shows that he was truly a man. He was deeply moved and greatly troubled. It's the same feeling you and I have when we look at, uh, you know, we watch a video of someone who's being abused or we hear someone's story about tragedy or we know a friend who's who's grieving a husband or a child that's died you know we, when we see someone hurting we hurt especially when it's another believer because we're one with them in a lot of ways so 
I know it's very true also of my children. When my children hurt, I hurt, you know, as their mother. Uh, it deeply moves me and makes me greatly troubled. And that's how Jesus felt when he looked at all these people, wonderful friends of his, people he loved, and they were crying and weeping because of Lazarus' death. So, then uh, he continues here. It says, um, he was greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? So right away, he's into the practical stuff now. He says, they're deeply troubled. I'm deeply troubled. They're sorrowful. Let's find out where Lazarus is. They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then the most interesting, shortest verse in the Bible, verse 35, Jesus wept. Not only was he deeply troubled, not only was he compassionate for these people who were sorrowful, he actually wept. Now, did he weep because Lazarus was dead? Probably not, because he knew what was going to happen was going to be for the glory of God and that Lazarus would be resurrected. So I don't think that's why he's weeping. I think he's weeping for the world, for the fact that death is in the world, for the fact that people have to go through something like this. And this, this idea of losing a loved one to death it's sad. It's just a sad situation. And he wept. He actually wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. So some people said, wow, you know, you can tell he really loved Lazarus. But in verse 37, some of them said, could not he who had opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? So they're questioning. They're saying, hey, you know what? He healed a blind man. What about his friend? Couldn't he have come here and, you know, couldn't he have healed him so he didn't have, we didn't have to go through this? So they're questioning it. And in verse 38, again, it says, then Jesus deeply moved. You know, he still has these deep feelings. He's, he's really at one with their feelings. He gets it. He totally gets how they feel. He came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Now, right away, Martha is going to jump in. We remember Martha is not only energetic, but practical. She's always thinking about the practical things. You know, let's get this dinner on. Let's serve these people. The, this practicality of Martha is, is a wonderful asset of hers, but sometimes it gets in her way. So right away, she questions Jesus. This is in verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. <laughs> so Martha cares about the fact that, hey, he's been gone a long time. It's going to stink. <laughs> That's what she cares about. She is practical. And also she's making a point here that, you know, it's a little... little too little too late here god you know i mean come on jesus this my brother's been gone four days already he's been in the tomb so you know he's gone and and he's at the point now that his body is going to start to stink jesus said to her now he's going to remind her of their conversation only a few minutes before he reminds her he says did i not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. How often do we read a scripture or go to church and come home and we're all, you know, we're full of joy and all of that. And then the first thing that happens, we question it. I doubt and I don't, I don't, I don't hold on to the very thing that I just learned from the scripture or the very thing I just heard in the sermon. Uh, it's, it's so human, isn't it, for us to forget. And Martha wasn't even holding on to something that he had told her just a few minutes before. And he said to her, didn't I tell you? If you just believe you're gonna see the glory of God in this situation. We need to look for that in every situation 
at, at First Trinity in Tonawanda, they call them God sightings. You know, you need to look. God is working. God is working. And if we look, we will see the glory of God in so many situations in our lives instead of doubting it. So this is what he's saying to her. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Faith is crucial. Faith is crucial. Because with faith, you're going to see with different eyes. You're going to understand that God is working. And so in verse 41, so they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around so that they might believe that you sent me. So some of what Jesus is saying here is strictly for the crowds. He wants them to understand that it's not just Jesus doing this miracle. It's Jesus in the power of the Father. Because as a human being, he's modeling that for us. We can do nothing apart from God. So even Jesus has to be connected with God the Father. And through that power, the miracle is done. And then God the Father gets the glory in addition to Jesus. I mean, Jesus is going to get some notoriety out of this. But he's more important that God the Father get the credit. And that is when, that's that same process that through Jesus that we can be involved in. That God can give us the power through Jesus and through his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to do things that we could not do on our own, and then the glory can go to God. So this is why Jesus is standing around saying to all these people, you know, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. He's thanking him in advance for the miracle because he already knows what's going to happen. And in verse 43, when he had said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with the linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Not only is he resurrected, he's free, totally free. And many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, meaning the people that were in the house when Mary was crying and then she went out to meet him and all this crowd of people followed along with her. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. And that was the purpose of the miracle, is that people would believe that not only did Jesus have the ability to heal a blind man or a lame person or forgive someone's sins? He actually had power over death. A very important arrow that's pointing to the fact that he will also have power over his own death. He will die, but he will be resurrected even as Lazarus was resurrected. Well, when everybody heard this, there was a lot of different reactions. Some people believed, which was great, wasn't it? I mean, that's the whole purpose. But of course, people with closed minds are going to see it a little differently. So through the next part of this passage, um, some of the Pharisees, uh, some people went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So now the, the, the mucky mucks, I call them, the bigwigs, people with all the power in the church, um, they got wind of this resurrection. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered in the council and said, what are we to do for this man performs many signs? If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe him and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So they are worried about their power. That's basically what it is. It's a matter of power. They're worried that Jesus is going to stir up everything. People are going to want him to be their leader, their king, because he's king of the Jews, you know. And they are worried about, they're thinking politically. Jesus is thinking spiritually this whole time. But the Pharisees, no. They are thinking of politically, of their own future. So Caiaphas is there. He's the high priest. One of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to him, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. Wow, his words are pretty prophetic here. And it says, he did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest of that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. So here's Caiaphas going to be in with the people who are going to crucify Jesus, but he also is being used of God 
to say something for the whole nation that one man is going to die, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So from that day on, they made plans to put Jesus to death. So because these people were all planning um, to put Jesus to death, Jesus, therefore, no longer walked openly among the Jews. So this is verse 54. He went from there to a region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. So he left that place knowing that, that he was kind of in danger, and it wasn't his time yet because they had to wait till Passover. Passover was the time that the Jews sacrificed a lamb, and that was the time that Jesus was going to die for the sins of the world. He was going to be the ultimate lamb. So it had to happen at Passover. It wasn't time yet, so he went off into the wilderness with his disciples. Okay, so now it's getting closer to Passover, okay? And they, everybody was looking for Jesus, but the chief priests and Pharisees had given orders that if anybody knew where Jesus was, that they would let him know because they were ready to arrest him. But Jesus, of course, is out in the wilderness. And we know then that he has to go to Jerusalem. He has to go there because that is what's going to happen. That's going to be the time that his crucifixion is going to take place. So eventually he comes out of the wilderness. And the next chapter, John 12, mentions Martha for the last time. It says six days before the Passover. So remember, Jesus has been in the wilderness since Lazarus. Now he's got six days. He's got to head in to Jerusalem. Okay. So six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. So he's on his way back to Jerusalem. Where does he stop? Of course, with his friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. He's going to spend one last day with them on his way to Jerusalem. And of course, what did Martha give him? Dinner. <laughs> so they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. So Martha's going to be the server, just like always. Martha has this gift of hospitality, and believe me, there's nothing wrong with it. Here, she's not... She's not chastised for that at all. It's part of life. We have to eat. We have to have food. We have to have drink. We have to have somebody to serve it. But Martha now has things in balance because watch what happens. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. So Martha is serving and Mary is anointing, and they're both happy. It's almost like a little vignette here to show us that Martha has learned her lesson. She's not chastising Mary or doing what she's doing. Martha's using her gift. Mary's using her gift. That's the way the body of, the Christ, body of Christ works. We all have our gifts, and they're different. And if we each use them to the glory of the Lord, that's what the, the church, the body of Christ, is all about. So Martha becomes a, a true servant in this little story of serving Jesus just before he goes to Jerusalem to be crucified. And Mary serves in her way. And without knowing it, they have provided kind of a last meal kind of thing for Jesus, other than the Last Supper, which he's going to have at the Passover. But this is the last time the whole group of them gets together and, and celebrates their friendship. So that is the end of the story of Martha. And tomorrow we're going to start looking at these same stories through the eyes of Mary. And we're going to see a little bit more about Mary of Bethany. But until then, have a blessed day. Enjoy everything you can about today. Bye-bye.